Everybody's excited. Why Wednesdays is back. I mean, what a great day to be alive. Malachi Brown, he's got a good block from Wyatt Pelicano. Brown, a first down and more, and out of bounds inside the 20 yard line. Shepard with the well executed swing pass. I never ordered Chipotle online either. Oh, uh, no, you don't do that. That's a, that is a cardinal sin. You are asking to get ripped off. It's a great day to be alive. Wyatt Wednesday here on the Sports Mix. Nick Verzellini, Colin McLaughlin, Dylan Bishop, and Wyatt Pelicano now joining us on the phone. Wyatt, how are you today? Well, like you said, man, it's a great day to be alive. It's Wednesday in Shepherdstown. It's another game week. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, there's plenty, plenty to be excited about in this world today. Wyatt, unfortunately for you guys, coming off of that tough loss to Kutztown, a sloppy game. Um, what did you take away from the game from the offensive line and, and the offensive perspective? Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, any time that you can play a full 60 minutes and not get into the end zone, that's a bad day. Uh, so that's that's on us. There's nobody There's nobody else to that you could ever give that blame to, and we know that. Um, we we have stuff that we got to get better at things. I mean, I talk a lot on here about like how great our team can be when we're clicking, and we clearly were not clicking. Uh, things were kind of falling apart. We were, I think, we did a okay job of keeping us ourselves together as a group uh, throughout it. You know, nobody really, there wasn't a whole lot of finger pointing on the sideline or anything like that, which is always that's a good thing. Like, so there's, there, I mean, there's always a silver lining and everything bad. Um, but, yeah, I mean, obviously the score speaks for itself. Uh, like, what's understood doesn't need to be explained. It was it was a bad day for us. Um, but we're definitely bouncing back. We had, we're stacking good days at practice right now. So we're, we're definitely doing everything we can to turn this thing around and now let, uh, and now let Kutztown beat us twice. Hey, Wyatt, good to, good to be here on a Wyatt Wednesday. First time in a little while, first of all. But uh, I'll ask you, when the offense is going through struggles like that, like you did on Saturday, what, what is your mindset on the sideline? Maybe we say you're coming back from another third, uh, three and out after maybe a couple in a row. What are, what are you doing on the sideline? Are you just talking to the offensive linemen, trying to keep them in check, to, uh, you know, keep them motivated? Are you talking to the, the quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers as well? What, what is your uh, mindset on the sideline when the offense isn't putting up a lot of points on the board. Yeah, I mean the key to our success is uh, is is staying calm, cool, and collected. In my opinion, so after every single turnover or every bad drive or whatever we had on Saturday, uh, I will pretty much come to the sideline. Uh, the whole O line sits down together. We had like the offensive side, like the bench is all there, um, and pretty much who's ever sitting there, which is always at least the offensive line that I'm talking to. Uh, like when we all sit down is just trying to keep everybody calm, you know, because obviously it is very easy, like I said, to start pointing fingers, you know, and, and burning on each other, especially with like, I mean, we got the stands right on our backs. Uh, and some of them were not happy and we hear all of that, you know, so it's, it, it's hard to keep composure. So, I mean, I'm not big on freaking out. I've never, I've never been big on that. You know, I, I've been, I've been hit before I've been beaten before, you know, so it's, it's, and you got to handle everything like a man, you know, the good times and the bad. So when we come to the sideline after a bad drive, I mean, we, we have some dudes that can get hot. And, and my entire goal whenever we get back is just to remind them that even, even if it's not exactly our fault, right, if we have to keep performing uh, in the best way we can and controlling what we can control to turn the thing around it and, and bounce back. And like I said, I feel like, we did a good job of that. Did the mistakes keep coming? Yes, absolutely. Like, there's no hiding from that. But I think, uh, especially, at, like, up front, I feel like we did a good job of staying collected, staying calm. We didn't turn on each other. We didn't turn on, on the skill guys or anybody else or point any fingers, which, I mean, we've had some problems of in past years. So that's pretty much my mindset is control the controllable. Uh, everybody stay calm. If we do what we're supposed to do, we can score at will. Like uh, we've seen it happen. We did it at Cal. We've done it in the past. Like, so th there's nobody that can stop us when we're clicking. So and we can't click if we're fighting. So that's my entire goal. Whenever I come to the sideline after a bad drop. Well, and I'm going to take it about one step further and kind of transition it into this week. Now you just mentioned how you stay positive, keep the energy up in the game, but, after an embarrassing loss, not really sugarcoating it there, and don't really feel like I need to, 
fans getting angry. And as you said, you can hear them on the sidelines. But going into this week, whether it's social media, whether it's in school, how do you make sure you and your teammates don't let that just eat at you, sulk in the loss, and be able to refocus so that you guys go out there and are 100% set on bouncing back and beating Shippensburg? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. It's, it's totally fair. And I, would, I mean, I want you guys to understand I'm never, ever going to get upset at y'all for saying anything like that because that was an embarrassing loss. You're not wrong in the slightest. I mean, we, uh, we went into that game with every intention of winning it. You know, there's not a single game that we're going to go into – uh, into with the intention of not winning it. So in my eyes, any loss is an embarrassing loss, no matter who it's to. Um, but yeah, absolutely. There, it's an outside factor for sure, but that's all it is, is an outside factor. And we got to keep it that way. Uh, we have to keep it about the guys in the room. We got to keep it about the guys on the field. Uh, and, and that's, to me, that's the recipe to, to cure that, you know, because words are words. They're just that. Uh, actions are more important in my opinion and nobody who isn't on the roster uh, in the coaching staff whatever a part of this program none of those people can take action they can only speak words so you got to just let let a spade be a spade let them say what they want and then we got to do everything we can to prove them wrong when we go back out there on Saturday. As Colin mentioned, Shippensburg this week, Wyatt, uh, what are you seeing out of their defense and, and their front line? Yeah, I mean, they play uh, they play a pretty traditional, like, 4-3. Uh, they'll bump to a 4-2 every now and then. So it's a four down front with, and then the two and three is two linebackers or three linebackers. They're primarily three. So it's a pretty it's a pretty heavy box. Um they don't. They they do. They have some twists and every. Obviously, when you're playing college football, you're going to get some twists and some stunts. Uh, but they're they're pretty straightforward. Uh, they're pretty big on just trying to beat us with talent and beat us with power and just be a more physical team. Which honestly, I I don't think that there's a team that can out physical us when we're when we're doing the right things. Like even even against even last week, like the battle in the trenches. Like watching the film, we're we're winning the line of scrimmage. We're we're making pushes. We are a physical ball team like there's no no question about that uh so I, I think we're in good shape there but obviously they're i mean they're coming in they smell blood in the water you know we, we just took a tough one um so they're going to try to capitalize on that and pretty much the entire goal is is playing the man in the mirror this week you know it's not about who we're going against uh we're trying to focus more on just doing what we do right because if we do what we do right there's there's not a team that can beat us so uh, that's really the point of emphasis this week going into Shippensburg. Uh, but yeah, they, they're, there's not a whole lot changing from how they've been playing in the past, uh, like watching the tape. So we're expecting a lot of similar stuff that we've seen before. And obviously, this is a big rival game for us. They're just an hour down the road. Uh, so they're going to come, they're going to come ready to play. And there's, it's going to be a high energy game for sure. So this is kind of a question about last week and this week coming up. The practice. During the week this week, when you're coming off of a game where you had a lot of turnovers, what are the coaching points from coaches like McCook or whoever it may be when it comes to preventing turnovers? Is it more about technique? Is it more about uh, mentality? Obviously, as an offensive lineman, you're not really holding on to the ball and not have to worry about turnovers personally for yourself when it comes to the team. What, what do coaches really, what sort of angle do they take at preventing turnovers? Yeah, I mean, uh, turnovers is, is kind of like offensive line play as a whole, where it, it's really, a lot of it is, uh, is like, I don't know, I want to say a lot of it's like want to, you know, like there's, there's definitely technique to it, and, and for sure they're doing a, they're like the coaching is doing, uh, like the emphasis is technique, uh, Coach McCook and Coach Clark are doing a good job of trying to teach these dudes, working extra ball security drills, working like, you know, and working with Seth to make sure that the ball is going to the right spots where the defender is not going to be. So worst case scenario, it's incomplete rather than uh, interception. But I mean, as a whole lineman, I don't really, I'm not really around a whole lot for all of that. But I know that uh, the big emphasis too is just it's a mentality of protect the ball. You know that that is what that's what the entire game is built around, and the O line isn't immune to it. You know because. If we trail the running back like we're supposed to, if that ball comes out, or if we're, tra- if we're covering passes like we're supposed to and a tip comes out, 
we can we have to be there to be ready to fight for that ball. You know, so we're not immune to it either. We have our role to play when it comes to protecting the rock. Uh, so, but I think a lot of it is just the energy of protecting the rock. We we got to vocalize it. We got to we got to manifest it. Uh, that's got to be the mindset. Is whatever happens, good or bad, we cannot turn the ball over. So that's really been a big point of emphasis, obviously, after last week. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, it's a combination of both technique and just and just the energy of protect the rock. All right, Wyatt, looking at this week now again, it's Shippensburg. We kind of touched on it last week when we started talking rivalries. What rivalry is the biggest rivalry for Shepard? And a lot of fans, because of the history between these two schools and also the distance between the two schools, would most likely all agree that it's Shepard, Shippensburg that is the biggest rivalry because of those things. So what is the, I guess, preparation like from maybe coaches or from teammates? What do you guys kind of do to motivate yourselves in a rivalry type situation? Anything different than a typical week that is non Shippensburg week? Yeah. I mean, we, uh, I think we're, we do a good job. We're doing a good job of, like I said before, we're trying to take the emphasis more on not making it about the opponent, but making it about us. Because that's that's really at the end of the day what's going to get the job done. Um, so I feel like we're 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 trying not as a team to buy into all of that, you know. Uh, and it's uh, some of it's certainly there. I mean, Coach McCook. Um, we we had we were all told ahead of time that I mean this program obviously has no love for us. Um, and in the past, it's been vice versa and what have you, right? I mean, everybody knows the history and, like you said, the distance. Um, so, like, they they don't like us, but nobody does. It's nothing new for us. I, I've said that a thousand times on here, too, where it's like there's really nobody in this conference that's, that's got any sort of love or respect for separate football, and it's a main reason of that is how successful we are. So we just have to come out and keep being the bigger man, you know, and just proving, talking with our pads and proving why people don't respect us, people don't like us. And we got we to gotta just make it about us uh, and just be the best Shepherd football team we can play and try not to buy into the, to the rivalry stuff and everything like that. Well, I know you still have a few years of eligibility left, but what are you studying and what is your plan to or what are you planning on doing after uh, football? Yeah, so I'm a sports marketing major. Um, I've been asked that a few times, you know, because obviously now, like, everybody wants to know what what why Wednesday's plans are, and I, I don't, I don't really, I don't really have one to be honest. I'm, my goal at this point in my life, uh, like you said, I got a couple years left, so I'm just trying to open as many doors as I can for myself. Um, and then that way, when the time comes for me to make a decision, I can make it. But I, I will say that in the running, obviously, first of all, I want to I wanna see how long I can play. You know, so that that is the the initial goal will always be to play until I can anymore. So uh, I'm going to I'm going to try to press that. Um, and then I, I love this game so much that if that doesn't work out, I think my immediate fallback would be coaching. Um, but after after those two. I, it could be a number of things. I've thought about teaching. I've thought about going into like what my father does in the financial insurance side of the of the world. Um, so I, that, that's kind of where my head's at with it, just somewhere in between there. But I mean, I could. I, I'm I'm the type of person where I'm confident in my abilities and my people skills that I could really do anything I wanted to. Uh, so it just all depends on what I'm feeling. So sometime on set this past Saturday, I, I get on Instagram and I see a video on the story of former quality control coach at Shepard, uh, Russell Goodacre's uh, story of Wyatt Pelicano in the locker room with a sledgehammer smashing a chair in the locker room. What is that all about? What is this tradition? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that's a little uh, that's a home game tradition uh, that started before me. Um that that I was, I mean, I I loved immediately. Um, I don't know. I mean, it just it gets the, it gets everybody fired up. You know, there's nothing nothing more uh, that that pumps your testosterone more than breaking objects with a sledgehammer. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I feel like that's kind of how it started. Um, but yeah, it's it's just it's it, it's it's a great way to fire everybody up. Uh, we'll. The equipment guys have fun. They write they write some nonsense on the chair. Whoever we're playing, 
and then uh, I'll give some big some big speech about how we're going to go out there and do crazy things, and then I'll slam the chair in front of everybody. Uh, it's a, it's a good time, you know. I enjoy doing it for sure. Um, I think I think it helps. I think it gets people fired up. Uh, but yeah, it's <laughs> actually funny. I didn't. Uh, I feel like I always see cameras in there when I'm doing it, but I'm the the fact that that happens has never made it out of the locker room until now. So that's actually that's funny. Yeah, Russ is a good dude, man. I, I love. He's a good. I, it's been really cool getting to know him. I never got to work with him personally, but he's uh, he's a really good dude. Just to follow up on this real quick, Wyatt, uh, is this always your role to smash the chair? And then is this something that you pass down to somebody after you're done at Shepherd? Yeah, so uh, before me, it was uh, an offensive lineman that went by the name Nordic Storm. (laughs) So I've actually never met him in person either. But I'm told that we have a similar just sledgehammer energy. Um, So... I don't remember. I don't know. I don't think I did it in 2021. I forget who did. I feel like it kind of rotated around. Um, but then in 2022, I did it the first time. And now, I mean, when I come into the locker room, like the whoever, one of the equipment guys or one of the strength coaches, like will be standing there waiting for me to hand me the sledgehammer. So I guess I'm doing something right because they keep giving it back to me. Uh, <laughs> but... Yeah, it, it's uh, it started off with with that guy, and um, and it's just kind of it's been going ever since. I don't know if you guys remember him. Uh, he was a O line with long blonde hair, uh, but yeah, he he was he was I guess a crazy individual like myself. Uh, so that's how it started, and now yeah, at this point, I feel like it would be it would be a little. I don't want to say off or on because obviously, if anybody ever wanted to give it a try, I'd be more than more than happy to let someone else do it. Um, but I think I think everybody kind of is expecting me to to do it at this point. All right, last question here, Wyatt. Before we let you go, we had Travis Bajan, the Beast, on yesterday's show, and he says he tunes in every Wednesday for this. My question for you: You win a million dollars for this situation, hypothetical situation. Okay, you can pick anybody at all to go up against. Travis and arm wrestling. If they beat Travis, you get a million dollars. Who are you choosing? God? I don't know. I, mean, that, <laughs> I don't I don't know. I listen, I've I've felt that I've taken that ride. You know, I've taken that ride twice. I've tried I've tested that man twice on the table. And both times he pretty much laughed in my face. And I like to think that I'm a pretty strong dude. So uh I don't know. I mean, I really don't. Listen, that man is is the is the Michael Jordan, Tom Brady of his craft. So you can, and I've been saying that for years. You can you can say what you want, but that dude is is the best at what he does, and you can you can his energy, everything about it. He knows it, and I mean, he talks his he talks his trash about it, and he should. Uh, I don't. I don't. I can't like. Seriously, maybe Eddie Hall, like a power lifter. But even then, I just don't think he's got it down to a science. It's so much more than just strength to him, his technique, and just his demeanor and, and the, the trash talk. I mean, it is demoralizing. Like he, had, he, he, was, he was letting me stay in the game. Like he was just holding my hand there and then just treating me like a little kid. And I was like, dude, I am a grown man in my prime. And this dude is handling me right now. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I have anybody that I, I would trust to do that. I feel like I would try to I would try to cut a deal with whoever was giving me the million to be like, well, what if I put someone crazy out there and we just cut it in half and not actually do it like a no contest? But I, I really don't know. Like there's, yeah. I mean, Joe, I watched Joey Fisher beat him, but he Joey got him after the entire football team had already tried. So and even then it was not a it was not like a clean win and Joey bench pressed two twenty five fifty times so I don't know <laughs> I really don't know. All right, well we'll let you leave on that note and appreciate the time this week, Wyatt. Yes, sir. Appreciate you guys.